Shalom and welcome again to another edition of Seekers of Meaning, the podcast of Jewish Sacred Aging. I'm your host, Rabbi Richard Address, and I greatly appreciate you being with us. As you know, these podcasts uh, are designed to explore how the revolution in longevity is affecting us, our communities, and our families. And we invite you to uh, listen to previous podcasts or connect with us on our website, jewishsacredaging.com. And you can visit us on our Jewish Sacred Aging Facebook page as well. And we're grateful for all of your support uh, to help us keep going. And we are very, very delighted and honored to have with us at this uh, on this edition of Seekers of Meaning, Rabbi Sergio Bergman, the president of the World Union for Progressive Judaism. Uh, Rabbi coming to us uh, in living color and live from Buenos Aires, one of the great, one of the great cities, one of the great cities. And Sergio, um, Baruch haba, uh, Buenos Dias, and uh, that's about it for my languages. Uh, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> Buenos dias, how are you? Shalom, Ubrahami, I'm, Buenos Aires. Really, a, I'm, a pleasure I'm, to to be with you. Really. I'm, I'm very happy to see you and very happy to hear you. And um, I hope you are doing well with the pandemic in uh, Argentina and um, staying healthy. And I hope your new year was wonderful and that you continue to stay healthy uh, in, in this, this very challenging times. So what we want to do here is explore something uh, that I've had the pleasure of working with uh, off and on for several years. Um, uh, I know some of the leadership in my work with the URJ and the World Union for Progressive Judaism is an amazingly wonderful, fascinating organization. Uh, could you just walk us through, Sergio, A, what the World Union is and a little bit of its history um, so people who perhaps may not be familiar with the World Union sort of like get, a, get an introduction? Yes, thank you. This is... Uh a large organization that uh, was founded in 1926 in London. And it's part of this ongoing process of liberal reform, progressive Judaism that maybe, I don't know if everyone knows, but we start in Germany in uh, the very beginning, the 18th, 1810 was the first synagogue in, in Germany that start with some approach how you can keep your tradition and to open yourself to modernity and the first revolution was in liturgy how to change the liturgy and how the general society in the modern states offered to the jewish people to be integrated we have some very important jewish philosophers that start to think about how to face modernity and this is really attention how you keep your roots, how you involve yourself in the modern world. And I can say that the World Union for Progressive Judaism today is like the worldwide network that connects all the continents, 1,200 communities, and most of 2 million of liberal progressive reform Jews that also include some of the reconstructionist communities. It's now based at his headquarters in Jerusalem. It was a very, very important move from our rabbi and leader, Dick Hirsch, that uh, in the beginning, the radical reform in Germany don't really was Zionist, maybe the opposite, but the liberal Judaism today is a very committed Judaism with Zionist. Our headquarters moved to Jerusalem. We grow in Israel. We have a very large presence in the general secular society. And one of the most important things of the World Union is to connect the partnership with a wider coalition of very powerful institutions around the world, like in North America with the Union of Reform Judaism, the URJ, in Europe, in Latin America, in South Africa, Australia, Asia, and the FSU that the World Union started before 30 years, for 34 years, to have a very strong presence there to release and to support the Jewish community in Iraq. And now for us, the challenge is how to build a worldwide platform to connect, to empower, to collaborate, to grow on the field, liberal 
Judaism to approach the challenge of the new world? I, I have to ask you, the, the, as you walk through the geography and the World Union has um, districts or for one of a better term, regions that are Asian. North America and Latin America and Australia and uh, former Soviet Union, Israel, Europe. Um, how do you how do you manage the various different because there are different Judaisms because the they're all progressive non orthodox but the Judaism the progressive Judaism let's say in Buenos Aires or um, Sao Paulo may be very different than the liberal Judaism in New Jersey or Sydney Australia or my old congregation that I served when I was a student in Southwest Essex Reform in Ilford in England, how the variations uh, have to be amazing, challenging. How do you begin to manage all those different approaches to Judaism? This is really our challenge. How we can build a large round table around the world to give to everyone a seat and a voice in this Jewish diversity. This is for us one of the challenging and also the miracle of the Jewish tradition. Because before the internet and before the Zooming and before all this new era that we have the virtual mood, Judaism is not the people only of the book. We are the people of the memory because all the time we are rebuilding our identity. That means we live in different countries, we spoke different languages, we have a local interaction between Jewish identity and the general identity, but we belong to the same family. We are an extended family, we are one people, but the unity is including the diversity. Uh, this richness is the strong that we achieve during all the civilizations. For me, Judaism is not only a religion. We start like a religion, but we are a cultural civilization. And the power of our civilization is how you can adopt and integrate different contexts, geographies, languages, and cultures without losing your identity. This is the big difference between assimilation and integration. We are not afraid to be in different parts of region of the world. Yes, and also how we explain what is the singularity of the Jewish identity. Because it's not the race, it's not the blood, it's not one language, it's not only one culture. And this is the interesting thing. How we build, we construct the identity with the collective memory. Coming back to our sources, our sacred texts, to sustain our traditions, but to have all the time the creative tension between to be fulfilled to the roots and open to the change. To be you know, rooted in our tradition, but also to be challenged by the new context. And this evolution of the Jewish tradition gives you the sense that you belong to the same, but you are changing. You are innovation. Right. It's innovation, creation, tradition, roots, and the tension that is for me a, a healthy tension between tradition and modernity. You know, it reminds me of my professor, uh, Dr. Rifkin of Blessed Memory, who taught us that uh, this Hegelian dialectic of Jewish history of uh, preservation, adaptation, and innovation is the key to, which is exactly what you're talking about. And really for those people who, who really never attended a World Union uh, biennial or regional program, you can sit in the room as I have many times and see this actually in, in action because people from various parts of the world telling their story about their community and the changes within their communities. And, and I wanted to pick up on some of that because to me it's fascinating of the work that the World Union does. For example, um, in Latin America, I've had the honor of doing a couple of Latin American regional uh, meetings. Um, 
my sense of there's a significant amount of change and or you'll, you'll tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, and, and in many ways, Jewish rebirth in various parts of Latin America um, and to very, very different type of Judaism than, you know, is practiced perhaps in North America. Are you seeing that in Latin America? I mean, you're, you're in Argentina and Brazil and, and all the other and Central America. Do you see a sense of rebirth or a renewal of, of more people coming to be involved and wanting to be involved? Yes, also because the history of our communities, you, you know that we are not native here. Right. We come from right. the ships. <laughs> we come with the immigration. We come from Europe. And also, this is the interesting thing. You know that North American shoes and South American shoes, we are the same family. Why? Not because we are shoes. Because, first of all, we come from the same place. From Europe, from Russia, from Poland. Some of our grandparents take the ship to the north, some of them to the south. Right. <laughs> and then when they come into our countries, they blend, they integrate. Jewish tradition with the cultural context. And there you have one of the, for me, amazing miracles. We are creating new ways to approach Jewish tradition that is not theological interpretation. For me, is cultural blending. Jewish roots with local context. That means for us, an example that you visit our uh, country. Here we have something that is unique. The gaucho judío. <laughs> the, the, the Jewish farmers. That they are not the Jewish cowboys. There are Jewish people that come from Russia, from Europe. They come into the country toward the land. And we were so grateful because we come from the Russia from the pogroms from the Tsar, or we come the, the last wave come from Germany from the Nazis. And here in Argentina, they receive the freedom and they receive the opportunity to grow and to have new generations of Jewish Argentinian people. But they take the local tradition of the gaucho. We take the mate, we ride the horses, we work the land, and then we blend. But blending is not assimilate, is you became a Jewish gaucho, you don't lose your Jewish tradition, but you integrate the Argentinian tradition. And then you are really like in the natural uh, evolution. This kind of thing make you strong because this evolution make you resilient. You learn from different cultures. You learn from different countries. You learn from different countries, but never you lose your root. Why? Because you have the flexibility to make a new interpretation in a new context. Uh, Sergio, talk to me a little bit about the work of the World Union in Israel. Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, in North America, there's there's this constant debate about uh, the nature, the, the the relationship of the American Jewish community and the Israeli Jewish community, and the and the and the beginning of the, this distancing and generational, and then the Reform community, the liberal community, uh, liberal conservatism, Amer uh, American Reform, Reconstructionists, etc trying their best to say, you know, we need a voice in Israel, a liberal voice, sure. but it's not, you know, what's the world union? How, how, what's our presence in Israel? How, uh, how is the world union waving the flag of progressive Judaism now in Israel? This is a central question. And this is the most important that we need to support. Why? Because this is the future. Not because Israel is the only place that the Jewish people must live. But Israel, the centrality of Israel, is to raise the question about how much Jewish is the Israeli society. How we can improve in day by day of the miracle of Israel, this startup nation, about democracy and pluralism. This is also a, a, a tension, a contradiction. 
the modern state of Israel that brings life among the nations, have the monopoly of the Orthodox, have not split between religion and state, can don't recognize all the strength and the richness of the Jewish tradition. And this is for us a challenge, how we can impact in the Israeli secular society to open the mind that we have diversity. We have different approach of interpretation that not because political reasons, you can give the monopoly to only one stream to decide who is Jewish, how you need to live your Jewish tradition. And this is the tension that we have in Israel. This is a modern thing that in the next decade, we will have the most higher population of Jewish people around the world in Israel. Right. And then you have a modern thing with some medieval approaches of radical Orthodox rabbis that don't recognize diversity, a Jewish state that don't give to everyone the right, and not only the Jewish people. Here we need to talk about the non-Jewish people in the state of Israel. Also, how we pray, but how we build the peace process. The land is sacred, but more sacred of the life. We need to arrive to a peace treaty with our neighbors. This is the dream of Israel, Shalom al Israel. And Shalom al Israel is, is, is not a dream. It's a very hard work that we need to pursue and we need to support. That means Israel is for us not only the country that we saw, it's the country that became. If we work very hard to fulfill the voice and the message of the prophet of Israel to become not another country among the countries, we need to be the Jewish state of Israel. That means not because you have Jewish people, because you live with Jewish values. So on that, uh, uh, Sergio, let's talk a little bit about the next generation, not my generation, but uh, the okay. youth. And and so where where is the World Union activating or being involved of, of, of raising this consciousness amongst the youth of progressive Judaism around the world? What are there specific programs that the World Union is involved with kids? Yes, we have not only programs, we have our youth movement that is a Zionist one, Netzer, Noar Zioni Reformi. This is a very important thing for us. Before 30 years, we have our kibbutzim, and the vision of the pioneers was to arrive to make Aliyah to Israel. Now, for us, the, the younger people must to have the Israeli experience. We are not saying that all the youth people must to move to Israel, but we believe that all the youth people, the Jewish liberal people, our young people, must to be in contact, in touch with the Israeli society. And maybe we to be involved to a new way to raise the new question. For us, tradition is the opportunity to our kids and to the young people not to repeat our answers. No is to encourage them to go forward and to find new answers. But to love the tradition, you need to know it. And then we need to really invest in education. And Jewish education is not only to know, it's to fulfill because we are communities of practice. When we want to teach to our kids values, you can say to them what they need to do. You need to live these values. You need to fulfill these values. You need to become a role model for them. And then they need to rebuild it in his whole life. Education means that our kids must be better for us, not the same. So the net the Netzer movement, the youth movement, and and before we continue with the, the if somebody wanted some more information Sergio, the, the website to go to is it still it's wupj.org that's the website yeah yes okay this is that of course so talk to me a little bit about if there is a resurgence in and what it looks like for progressive judaism in europe it's 70 years since the end of world war ii uh, several generations, 
things are changing. What's going on? Is is there a concomitant um, revitalization of progressive Judaism in Europe that you're uh, that you're working on? Yes, Europe is really a challenge for us, you know, because this is a continent, but include different continents <laughs> inside one continent. It's, right, it's not right, Europe right. that you have the traditional countries, because the leadership of the progressive liberal Judaism, the reform Judaism, was, first of all, we started in, in Sherman. We moved to UK. Then we have Russia. Now Russia is the former Soviet Union. That means that we have at least three or four countries. For example, we have Belarus, we have Ukraine, we have Russia, and all these Jewish people, they are part of Europe or they are outside Europe. In the right. same question that we have, what's happened right now when we have the powerful, the powerful leadership of Germany? Because Jewish, Jewish communities and Jewish tradition have an open dialogue with general geopolitical issues. The politics of the countries have a very Im important impact in the Jewish tradition. An example, we have the emancipation program, the integration of the Jewish people in the general states was the light and the north of the reform movement in Germany. Who, who stopped it? Who decided that it's not possible to do that? Was not a Jewish decision. No, it was a political decision for the Nazis. When the National Socialism takes the power in Germany, they decide to exterminate the Jewish population. We lose six million of our people. It was a tragedy. It was the highest tragedy that we have in contemporary Jewish life. And this is a question of Jewish evolution was a split, a division in Jewish people? No, come from outside, from a political background. And then this monster is not disappeared. Have mutations, this monster, because we have new form of anti-Semitism. And we know that we have very strong roots of anti-Semitism in Europe. Europe keeps anti-Semitism roots and they revered it like anti-Zionism. And this is one of the highest challenges that we have in Europe. That means that we need to have a new dialogue in Europe. Different language, you have English, you have French, you have Spain, you have Germany, you have Russia. This is Europe, but five, six languages. And also you have the East and the West inside Europe. That means for us, it's like an ongoing process of a Jewish laboratory. What will we <laughs> create in the next generation? Right. So, the, the, I mean, you're, you're painting this picture of, of just tremendous um, activity, challenges, and the World Union remains the, if I'm not mistaken, the only coordinated progressive Jewish voice around the world to try to deal with the, the future of progressive Judaism in all these various countries. Um, you, <laughs> the, 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 the challenges seem to be overwhelming, but you're blessed. You, you have a tremendous amount of lay people, lay involvement. Uh, they sure. come from synagogues, correct, from all over the world. If somebody wanted to be involved with this, if somebody wants to, to say, you know, I, 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 this is something I really want to give my, some of my time, my expertise, and perhaps also some money, how, how do they do that? What, what's the process of, of somebody being involved and getting involved with the World Union? This is a very central point, you know, because this is a movement that is led by lay people that work together with the professionals, but it's not a movement that is centered in rabbis. We have a lot that we work on the field in the communities, but we work together in regions. But the key leadership comes from the lay people, you know? This is one of the difference between the reform movement and the conservative one in the non-Orthodox 
movement. If we are talking about liberal Judaism, for us it's very important the, the, the central leadership of the lay people. That means that if you want to be part, you need only to come to any of the liberal communities and to show them and to talk with the lay people, not only with the rabbi. Right. You can come into our website and then you have an application to look for your community that is close for your uh, home and then contact them. I don't say contact us because we don't want to be an umbrella organization. We don't believe in umbrella organizations. We believe in symmetric dialogue in a worldwide platform. For us, the World Union is not on the top. For us, on the top is the field, are the community, the lay people, the rabbis, the professionals, near to your house. This is for us the top. We are on the back, not on the front. We support communities, we collaborate, we empower communities, on the field, because we believe in diversity and we believe that we have not only one way to be Jewish and we have not only one way to be progressive. And the 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 WUPJ.org is the website. Yes. And I will tell you sure. from personal experience, if there's anybody out there who would say, you know, this is something I would really like to investigate, uh, Go to the website, follow the directions, get involved, talk to your synagogue leaders. Um, these meetings are extremely powerful. One, I remember, remember sitting in the last international meeting uh, that I attended because I was doing a, 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 some of my Jewish sacred aging workshops for them. And the, to, to talking about talking with people from congregations around the world. And one of the things that was the most striking is the same needs, wants, hopes, desires, and dreams of people in these congregations, no matter where they, they were all the same. They may say it in Spanish or Portuguese or German or Russian or English or French, but at the heart, as you were saying, Sergio, this, this international culture of, of just wanting to do mitzvot and how to make meaning in your life. That's really at the heart and the strength of the World Union. So um, I want to thank you very much for your time. Uh, I know I know you're you're very very busy. You have another program coming up, and um, say hello to some people there that uh, Carol and some of the others, Silvio I, and, and uh, Sylvia also in Silvina, rather Silvina down the street in in Buenos Aires. But mm -hmm. thank you. In this new year, just continued good luck. Stay healthy, most of all, in this pandemic. And we hope to come back to you and pick up sometime later on on the continuing progress and, and really brilliance of the World Union. Just wishing you much success and happiness. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best. Stay well, healthy. And thank you for the opportunity to share with your audience this beautiful challenge to be it modern, but to be Jewish. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Todaraba. Muchas gracias. And to all of you, thank you for listening to this edition of Secrets of Meaning, the podcast of Jewish Sacred Aging. And a reminder that you can follow us on our website, jewishsacredaging.com, as well as the Facebook page. And on the Facebook page, um, on the website, on the homepage, there's a donate button. And we appreciate if you uh, would choose to make a tax-free donation to further our work. A reminder that these podcasts are recorded at the studios of Lubetkin Global Media in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And a thank you uh, shout out to our producer, Steve Lubetkin. Once again, thank you for being with us. We look forward to greeting you on the next Seekers of Meaning podcast, the podcast of Jewish Sacred Aging. Toda and Shalom.